Next, let's jump back into the player and let's finish setting up the animations and then we'll add an animation tree so that we can switch between idle and run animations and also switch to the swing animation when we need to. So for animations, let's go to idle down and I'm going to just duplicate this. So we'll do idle up. And then for that, we take the texture, go to art, gathers exterior characters, find walk up, bring that in here for the texture value. And that should basically be it actually. So if we bring the cursor back to frame zero, we'll see that the animation updates here. If we hit play, our character is just not moving. It's basically what we want, but, but then the tool we actually want to show in the right hand. So we are gonna need to have to move it over here to the right. So let's toggle recording, uh, click on the equip sprite, take the scale value, turn off link between X and Y, and then take the scale X and make that one. Okay, and that should automatically update here for the scale here. Uh, if it didn't, then just change the value manually. So uncheck the link and do one one for the uh, value for the equip sprite. Okay, now we need to move it over here to the right. So W for move mode and reposition it. Okay, and you can always test by hitting play, just making sure that it's going to be positioned to the right spot. And then in order to get the tool to show behind the character in this case, you might want to add an Z index and keyframe that to, let's say, negative one as the value. So you see if we make it negative one, then now it's going to show behind the character, which looks more correct. And let's add that keyframe in there. So now that will look correct for this animation. But if we switch to something else like idle down, you can see that's still going to have that value of negative one. So if we do the ordering this way, then we do need to make sure we reset that on our other animations. So let's go to idle down and I'm going to take the Z index and make it zero here and keyframe it there at the start. So let's create and add that. So now on idle down, our pickaxe shows in front of the player, but on idle up, it shows behind. Same thing with swing down. Let's uh, add in the Z index of zero and keyframe it. So we only need to do this at the start and then walk down. We will also keyframe the Z index to zero and make sure that the keyframe values actually snap to zero, zero here. I'm not sure how that happened, but um, yeah, we just need to just make sure our animation's working properly and everything snapped to the right interval. Okay, and if we hit play, then that's looking correct for walk down as well. Okay, so let's keep going. We have idle up. Let's duplicate that and do idle and do idle left. So click on the texture keyframe and put in gather a walk left as the animation. Okay, and then toggle it to zero seconds so that we can see where everything's at. And we need to change the position of our equip sprite. Also the scale by the looks of it. So I click on scale, toggle off link and change X to negative one. And uh, yeah, whenever you just need the values to update when you set it manually like that, just toggle it back to zero seconds by moving the timeline cursor around. Now let's do W for move mode. Let's position our pickaxe over here. Uh, so just remember where the right hand is for the animations to make sense. So if the character is facing the left, the right hand is behind the character. So we do want the tool to show behind the character, which uh, negative one Z index value will fix. Okay, so let's duplicate one more time and do idle right. Okay, so change the texture out to gather a walk right. And then we just need to, once again, reposition everything. So take the sprite and let's toggle off the link for scale, change it to one, one, keyframe that, hit W to move and position the tool over here, right around there, the Z index, we need to reset that to zero. So let's do that and then keyframe it. Okay, and the pickaxe can be right around there. Uh, we might actually consider like rotating the pickaxes down on these left right animations so that it's not right in front of the character's face so we could hit e to go into rotate mode rotate it something like this uh, you can even hold control down if you want to snap it to 15 degrees w to move it down and let's move it down there yeah maybe we need to rotate it more so i'll snap another 15 degrees move it down with w okay so that should work out pretty well just click on the keyframes and make sure it got all of the values and it did. So let's make the idle left now match that. So go to idle left. So we'll take the rotation of this. I'll hit E. Let's rotate it 30 degrees to the left. So that's negative 30. And then W to kind of position it. So position it like that. So idle right has it there. Idle left has it there. And uh, that should work pretty okay.
So now we just need to repeat the steps for our other animations. Swing left, up, right, and walk up, left, and right. So let's start with walk here. So I'll go to walk down. Let's uh, duplicate this. So I will call this actually walk up. So for the texture, we want to change out. Gather will walk up, put it there. So just like with the idle animations, we're going to need to adjust the position of our equipped sprite here as well. So let's make sure, once again, recording is enabled so that you get the auto keyframing. Let's hit W to go into move mode and position our tool over here to the right. Now, of course, we need to flip its direction as well so that the tool is facing out to the right. So let's go to Z index, and I'm going to change that value to negative one here. Hit enter. To update that, just toggle the timeline to time zero. Okay, let's get the tool further over here to the right. Then we're going to need to reverse the scale as well. So I'm going to turn off the link in the inspector, and let's take the scale to one one. Okay, and I'll readjust the timeline to the zero second there. So we get the tool to adjust its position. Let's move it with W and let's see. I think for the walk down, we just kind of had it at that standard rotation of zero degrees. So we'll just do the same thing for walk up as well. Okay, so there's our starting position. Now, if we go over to here, we just need to set the next position. Okay, and here we'll have the position set as well. Something like there. And then the last position over here to the right. We also need to take the Z index and set that to negative one so that our tool hides behind the character visually. So let's go to the value here in the inspector, port negative one, reset the animation, hit play, and let's see how that looks. So uh, that's not bad right there. It's pretty consistent with our walk down animation, just reversing the direction. So we can leave it like that for now. Okay, let's do walk left and walk right now. So I'll go to walk down and duplicate that. Make this walk left. So for the texture of the body, let's take walk left.png and put that in. Okay, and then we can hit play for the animation and see where we're at and what needs to change. So in this case, the tool is going to hide behind the player. So we need to change the Z index to negative one again. And you can really use whatever value you want for the Z index here, as long as it's a negative value or hide behind the uh, player's value of zero. And having it set to something below negative one might actually be preferable because then you have that in-between value. If you ever need to stack more than two sprites on top of each other, it won't be an issue for this tutorial. Uh, but just keep that in mind that this is an ordering thing and you can have multiple objects, not just two or one object. So anyway, we need to reposition the tool. So I'm going to hit W to go to move mode. Let's put this over in front of where the player should be there. And I can hit play for the animation to get that Z index value to update. Okay, now we just need to update the position of the tool to wherever the player's hand is. So it looks okay at zero seconds. Let's jump to the 2.2 seconds frame. And let's move it back here. Since the right hand is going to mirror opposite the left hand, let's go to 0 0.4. Okay, and we actually are going to want the same value as here at 0 seconds. So that's negative 6 and 3. I can just manually type that in for consistency. Okay, negative 6, 3. And then let's go to the final frame here at 0 0.6 seconds and position it there as well. So now if we hit play, there's our walk left animation. And we can duplicate that as well for a walk right animation. So for walk right, let's change the texture for the right texture, of course. And we're going to need to reverse the scale on the pickaxe. So let's toggle off the link and make the value 1-1. One, one. Okay, so now it's facing the right. Move the position of the tool to right around here for the first frame. And let's just keep going forward. So here we need to move the tool right around here. The next one, same position as the first frame. And let's see if those values match. I, you can, of course, just manually change the value. Seven for the pixel, uh, pixel X. And then the last frame as well. We'll just go right around here. Okay, let's hit play for this. And uh, not quite right. So at frame zero, let's change the Z index back to zero or a positive value so that the pickaxe is gonna show in front. 
Okay, and then we just need to position it on each of the frames to make sense. So right around there, here we can move it down, and there we can move it there as well. But uh, for our idle frames, I believe we gave it a rotational value. Let's see, idle right, idle left. So yeah, 30, 30 degrees there. And we would want that to probably be the case here for idle left as well. So I'm going to put negative 30 here for the rotation on idle left. And let's try to make it consistent across our animations. So that'll be our idle left, our idle right. And let's go to walk left and set the rotation here to negative 30. And let's see, do we need to change the position of the pickaxe more? Not too much, but maybe a little bit. Just update it on each frame till it looks good to you. Okay, and then let's go to walk right. Let's set the rotation to 30 degrees positive. Okay, and here we're going to need to reposition things. So let's move the pickaxe. Next frame, move the pickaxe. And here, move the pickaxe. And put the pickaxe there. So there's our walk right. Looks pretty okay. Walk left. All right. Walk up walk down, and of course we have the idle animations. Okay, so basically we just need to repeat the same steps with swing up, down, left, right. So it's gonna be very, very similar here. Let's duplicate the swing down animation to make swing up. And then let's take the texture and put our swing up animation in the texture slot. Of course here we're gonna to need to make the Z index negative. We're also going to need to reverse the scale on X. So scale to one, one. Okay, let's see where we're at and let's position the tool over here to the right and then swing up. We're still going to need to take that position over to around about here. And then finally, this frame is going to be a little bit tricky. We need to um, first set the rotation to something good. So let's, yeah, I think if the hand's right around there, then this would probably be a good rotation. So let's get the rotation, maybe something like that then move it up here. Maybe it needs to rotate a little bit more to the left. Yeah, okay, that, that looks okay. So it's hard to see the pickaxe if it's even visible at all, but uh, we can definitely see that the hitbox is there. So maybe we just position it for the sake of the hitbox right there in the middle. All right, and let's see, our second frame is okay. Let's hit play on this and see if that's gonna work for us. The second frame, I think, needs more of a rotation back. So I'm gonna put it like that. Let's move here, uh, maybe that's too much. Just kind of uh, tweak it as you want. First frame, yeah, we should rotate that as well. So maybe it can be here and then we go further back and then we go forward. Let's try hitting play. Okay, maybe too much rotation initially. Let's put it like that, hit play. And yeah, I think we can work with that. We can always come back to this later if uh, we need to tweak it. So let's duplicate swing down again and we'll make that swing left so of course we're changing the texture out so let's get the swing left animation pop that in there and in this case uh, the hand is behind so we want the z index to be behind as well so I'll set negative five here and then let's position so here let's position the pickaxe let's rotate it okay so right around there and then the next frame let's rotate it oh we want it to actually rotate back so let's put it right there and then the final frame Let's rotate it forward so that it hits the ground in front of us. And something like that could be pretty okay. So let's hit play. Okay, and that's looking all right. So let's duplicate this again for swing right. So swing right. Change the texture out to the swing right texture. We're going to need to reverse the scale. So scale 1-1. One, one. Then let's rotate it and position it in the character's hand. Go to the next frame. Rotate it backwards for the swing and position it in the hand and the final frame, rotate it forward so that it hits the ground and then position it in the hand. Okay, maybe we overshot that by 15 degrees. So right around there. Okay, so let's hit play for our swing right. Okay, let's test our swing left. Those are looking all right for right now. 